Welcome to the hottest real estate topics on the planet, keeping you up to date with all the creative ways to buy and sell real estate without bank qualifying, so anyone can build real income starting today. Here is another great show with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. All right, here we are at another episode of Flipping Houses for Rookies. Good morning, Bill. <laughs> I was going to leave some silence there and see what happened. Yeah. Episode number 166, Peter. <coughs> Are you ready? We're going to jump right into it because we have a lot to cover. Oh, boy. I'm going to make sure I got all my notes here. All of a sudden, I realize I have to make sure I have everything here. I do. So the name of today's episode is, Are You Ready? Give me a drum roll, please. 20 Ways to Buy Real Estate Without Money Down. 20? 20. 20. And there's a specific what? reason why I'm doing this, so let me tell you about that. Go ahead. So let me read the description. <clears throat> Anyone, including you. Who? Uh, us. You. <laughs> Anyone, including you, can profit from turning houses into cash these days. If armed with the correct knowledge and a little bit of action, you can turn your financial financial scene around quickly, often in weeks not years. You don't have to wait is the actual point that I'm trying to make here. Mm. Funny thing is, <clears throat> one of the very few lessons taught to us about money in school is you need money to make money. If you think the only place to get money is from the bank, well, you have fallen into the trap of the rich wanting you to think that so they can get so they can get richer by charging you interest fees and then do all that uh, interest and fees they create out of thin air thin air thin air yes more to the point i think you have a better advantage if you don't get stuck in their web of lies and deception I'm not holding back this one. Jeez. <laughs> Go for it, Bill. Some of the best investors I have trained were flat broke and had a credit score. Are you ready for this? Yeah. They had a credit score that you would think is similar to the temperature you would cook a roast in on <laughs> Sunday afternoon. Ooh. 350. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> Ooh, ouch. Yeah, I, know, I don't know it went that low. <laughs> I've never seen that. That's my point. Oh, God. Those with money tend to leap before they learn. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, they got money. Yeah, and they leap before they learn. In this podcast, we're going to open your eyes up to a multi multitude of ways you can get houses turned into income without money. And this is not something I've done before. <clears throat> this is not my normal seven way strategy that we talk about yeah, i think 20 where did you get 20 20 20 there's there's more i'm sure but this was oh, just me spending an hour at my computer yesterday yeah, 20 is enough i think a few of those will fit all of us right. one way or the other so here we go we're gonna jump right in okay go ahead so those uh who have money tend to leap before they learn like i said mm. right they blame their failures on systems the economy their spouse, their mother-in-law, and everyone or everything else except them. Mm. Right? And I know this because yeah. I've coached these type of people. Yeah. Okay? And the hardest part when I have somebody that has money, in fact, I've gotten to a point where if they don't turn around during my interview with them, because I interview every coaching client, mm -hmm. they're, they're only allowed if I allow them because mm -hmm. they have to have like certain motivation and stuff like that. Sounds so arrogant, but... That's why the group has done so well. Mm -hmm. It's because it's a pre-screening pre -screening process. Yeah. I've actually had some clients that have money and have not let them into the group because they've had money mm -hmm. and their way of thinking is not correct. Mm -hmm. Okay? They're solving things with, I can buy this, I can buy that. They could just write a check. Yeah. And they think that's the solution. Okay. Which is why I say if you're broke, you'll have no choice but to learn a little. I'm not saying a lot. A little before you leap. Mm. Right? And if you think this is a huge advantage for most, 
when making, I'm sorry, give that to you again. Uh, and if I, and I think, I think, mm-hmm. I gotta read in my own writing here. I should probably just read it and then just talk instead of just <laughs> trying to read it. But, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna try to do this quickly so we can get to the 20 points. And I think this is a huge, huge advantage for most when making, uh, or walking through the wall of fire called real estate profits. Right? So I really do believe that. Not having money and bring, being broke, it, you're better off that way mm. than to have money. Because when I put you in my coaching group, and I'm not here talking about the coaching group, it's just this is my experience with it because I've yeah, dealt with these people. That's a good example. Yeah, it's real, real experiences. Right. You're not just making stuff up here. But. So I have to undo their bad habits to mm. get in new habits, mm. right? And, and when they have money, they have bad habits. Well, it sounds counterintuitive, like money's a bad thing, uh, but like debt is a bad thing. No, if your debt makes you money, it's a good thing. If your debt costs you money, it's a stupid thing. But the point, I, the point, the way I understand you've explained this a few times is uh, when you don't have money, you got to be sharp. Okay. You got to think, how can I do this? Like some guy standing in the middle of a field with no money, no nothing, no nothing. He's got to find something to build, to grow, so he can sell it downtown. He can't even go buy something and sell it. Right. He's got to find something on the ground. Oh, I found some sticks. Need firewood? You have to be smarter to figure out how you can do it. You will learn more that way. You'll have more tricks up your sleeve and so, more awareness. You know how we talk about uh, the book, The Creature from... Thimble Island, uh, Jekyll. Jekyll Island. Yeah, uh, we actually did a podcast on that not too long ago, so it's fully revealed. Yeah. Uh, I have a new book. Oh, yeah, uh, I just got done. I actually listened to it on tape, which I normally don't do because I like to read. But I have actually three or four books I'm trying to read right now, and I can't get enough information quick enough, so mm-hmm. I've been listening to it in the car. Mm-hmm. It's uh, Kiyosaki's new book called Fake. Mm. It is. Uh, it it's repetitive. You know, like he he repeats a lot of stuff over and over again, but I think that's yeah. intentional because uh, he's trying to get the point across. Well, we've probably been taught the opposite of whatever he's saying, right? Yeah. So the first part was really interesting, which is about money. The second part is on education, mm. uh, and and this is exactly what he's talking about. And he's talking about the education in relationship to uh, money and finances. Mm. So and he has a lot of room to talk about that stuff. Yeah. So uh, if uh, maybe Emma Emma could put the put it put the link in Facebook, uh, fake by Robert Kiyosaki. So she'll do that now. <clears throat> All right. So in this podcast, we're going to name twenty aspects of how to not use hard-earned cash to build your empire that generates money now, money monthly, money later. Think about it. Why do so many people want to get into real estate? Mm. So I've listed four reasons. Mm-hmm. One, you work once. Mm-hmm. Two, you get paid money now. Mm-hmm. Three, if done correctly, money later. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, money now. Money I, now. Do they go, yeah. Yeah, I wrote it wrong here. So, so <clears throat> two, get money now. Yeah. Three, if done correctly, get money monthly. Mm-hmm. And four... Get money later. So, th- so f- for a full detailed description of what I'm talking about, because I don't want to cover it now, uh, you can go to episode number, uh, episode uh, podcast episode number 136. Uh, we call it 12 Profits from One House, mm. from Buying One House. Mm. So you can go there and you can realize in that podcast why real estate is so appealing to most people is because they work hard in the beginning and then if set up, now it doesn't mean that you don't work at all. I don't believe in passive income. No. Passive income, you know, putting something on an automaticity and letting it run without giving it attention always blows up. No, because if you're not paying attention, somebody else is. Right. I mean, somebody's there. If it's an asset, somebody's doing something with it. Mm-hmm. Somebody sees it. Somebody's going to want something. Somebody's going to need something. Right. So it's okay. But the point is uh, you get more for less work right. once you set it up correctly. So so let's just give a quick example of this. Uh, driving a car. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it took you uh, you know, a lot of work to learn how to drive the car, get your driver's license, get your insurance, buy the car. Mm-hmm. How hard is it for you to get in the car and drive now? I do pretty good most days. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. But you see you see sure. the correlation. Sure. So 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 where before like the first time you got your car, you had to get your driver's license, you had to take the test, you had to get your insurance, you had to get the car. So the first month for you to go to the grocery store in the car 
it was a lot of work. Mm-hmm. But now for you to go to the grocery store, you just get in the car, you jump in the car, and yep. 10 minutes later, you're at the grocery store. Yeah, it's, right? it seems like you have to do work somewhere. But if right. you do it smart in the beginning, you can coast a little bit later. Uh, I think of like a guy who never gets a great education. He's always working real hard every day, digging <clears> ditches or whatever the guy's doing. Right. Plumbing, let wit. It's all good work, but he's got to work every day for his dollar. Totally. And we're trying to get away from that one. If we work a little harder and a little smarter, we can set things up to pay us. So the, object, good. so the object is uh, in real estate is, is you can work 20 hours a month and get us a significant or 10 hours a month, mm-hmm. depending on how big your portfolio is, and get a significant amount of money. We're, we're, we're kicking around in new arenas now with guys that have 1,000, 2,000 apartments, 5,000 apartments. And their motto is, is you manage the managers. Right. <clears throat> so it's just a different level. Like right now, right now, what I've been doing is is managing the the not the employees, but managing the, the people. Yeah, the, the tenants. tenants. Yeah. <clears throat> well, they're not always tenants <clears throat> because sometimes we sell with oh. an option buy. But you know, we manage. Mm-hmm. We're managing the individual. Yeah, and um, the workers or somebody to go put right. a door in or go paint something. Right. Yeah, the whole thing, the team. So we are the management company, mm-hmm. uh, which is soon going to change because, well, you know, my portfolio is getting big enough now where I'm just going to manage the managers, mm-hmm. right? But it's okay for a while because you're learning what it's like. So when you turn it over to somebody, you know what they're talking about right. and you know if they're like stupid or not doing it right. So that's why that's why real estate is so appealing to most people, mm-hmm. right? So also, if you don't think uh, the 20 ways to buy real estate uh, without money down is for you, you know, like if you for some reason think that there's some like this isn't for you, mm. uh, you can go listen to podcast number 141 uh, where we talk about where to get miscellaneous money for real estate deals. OK, so um, if you're if you're just looking to straight up buy deals, you know, like with a bank or you, you, you have a good credit score, or you can get bank loans, then go there and that'll help you. Mm-hmm. OK, lastly. Uh, some people think that the only way to make money in real estate is to buy property, right? You talk about this, sit on them for 30 or 40 years, contend with bad tenants, plug toilets, and sometimes negative cash flow. Mm-hmm. These investor novice, and I call them investor because you think just because they <clears throat> accumulated 10 properties and they're and they're living off of those properties and they're doing good I still call them novice investors because mm-hmm. when they usually have the ability and these guys usually have the ability to go to the bank and get money and uh, they didn't learn what I'm about ready to teach you or, or all the things we teach you on this podcast right uh, our experience uh let me get my thoughts here. I'm trying to figure this out. So, so what I'm saying is, is that they they're they're not educated because mm. really what happens is that they're using the economical environment to make their money, right? Yeah, very conventional. So, yeah, very conventional. And they're and they're using things like appreciation for a profit, mm-hmm. right? So they're you know one of the things that we talked about many many podcasts ago and I have no idea which one it was but I'm going to say it again is is if you're not buying a property if you buy a property and it doesn't have equity and doesn't have cash flow today then something's wrong or the potential of cash flow especially equity mm-hmm. now notice what I'm saying there when you're buying a property that's very that's very important buying a property mm-hmm. when we do a slot deal we're not buying the property we're buying the paper Right. And we're controlling the property. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to put a deed in your name and you're going to actually have a deed in your name where you're like the end all, be all, Mm -hmm. decision maker, everything comes back to you, including the liability. And yep, the payments. And the payments and the taxes and the water and all that stuff. You you must have equity. Mm -hmm. You must. I prefer no less than 20% equity, which is why the seven steps or seven offers that we use Mm -hmm. is that way, the seven Mm -hmm. strategies. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you're not, if you're putting a, a a deed in your name, then you must have equity in that property. Otherwise, don't buy it. It's a bad deal. Yep. And I prefer that you know where you're going to get money now, money monthly, money later. Uh, the more of those trifecta that you can get, that's putting a deed in your name. Now, the purpose of the slot deals and the option deals and, you know, getting the deed deals and all that stuff, or not even getting the deed deals, or, or you know, all those other lease options and mm-hmm. all that other stuff, the reason for that is because you don't put the, the deeds not in your name. So you could technically walk away anytime you want. You'll piss off a few people, but there's no legal ramifications in most cases. 
right? right? Which is right. why we call it risk free. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we're going to talk a lot about that in the next couple minutes. So, so most of us don't have thirty or forty years uh, for this old fashioned ideology and, frankly, what I call a stupid way of making money with real estate. Huh? How's that? No, no. We've talked to those guys. Uh, you know, they they save up money, they scrimp and save, they buy one house with a deposit and a bank loan. Right. They wait a few years, scrimp and save, and buy another one. And the end game is have maybe five or six places. Right. But they've worked their whole lives to do that. When we try to do that every year, every month, yep. you know, by being smarter about it. And, you know, they just put all their beans into that. And by the time they get there, their knees are broken, their backs are sore. Yep. And they can't even enjoy themselves bar- barely. And then you say, I'll buy. He goes, well, if I wait one more year, I can yeah. make another $2,000. Oh, my God. Just yeah. just wait for the heart attack. It's because they're, that's because they're working on the environmental aspect of making money in other words the uh you know the market and the neighborhood and the building you know mm-hmm. it's all physical stuff instead mm-hmm. of you know making money out of thin air mm-hmm. so people uh always need a place to live agreed so why not be in a business where at least you have customers all the time yeah right yeah that, that's us so why not so so no matter what the economic uh downturns or upturns are Doing what we do, there's always a customer that wants to sell, and there's always a customer that wants to buy. So mm-hmm. why not do that, right? Yeah, you might lose the tattoo salon, not the liquor store, right? But you know, some of the I've, I've ten years ago, I saw people I knew just the strip mall is half empty. Yeah. I'm, I'm out of cash. Yeah. I, you know, had stores and whatever that weren't that popular. You know, first thing to go was the things you don't need, yeah. not the liquor store. But you know, that happens. But right. you gotta live somewhere. So uh, if you just figure out a couple of the 20 ways that I'm going to show you, one or two, uh, how to buy real estate without money down, uh, you'll soon produce paychecks in the thousands instead of the hundreds. Mm -hmm. And that's why people like real estate Mm -hmm. is because they can produce checks for not a lot of work. You can do it part time for not a lot of work and get paychecks in the thousands, not the hundreds. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, here, here's a new saying. You ready? Yep. This is this is absolutely. You're gonna be hearing this a lot. Did you make this this statement up, Bill? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess part of it. I, I think I've heard Ron LeGrand say it. Okay. So, it, it, well, I will give Ron LeGrand credit for it. So, just because I'm not sure where it comes from. And you're editing. Yeah. <laughs> if offers aren't getting made, you're not gonna get paid. <laughs> Right? If offers aren't getting made, you're not going to get paid. Bill, I feel a song coming on. <laughs> and I find most think that they need money and a way to pay for the property before they go make offers. We hear a lot of that in our meetups. I hear that on my, you know, because lately what's been happening, uh, I've try- kind of changed the model a little bit. The people that come to the meetup, uh, they get a free consultation with me mm-hmm. if they sign up for it. So I spend 45 minutes with, you know, a dozen people a month, if not more sometimes, mm-hmm. uh, listening to their stories and what they hear. And it's like I, I hear a lot. And that keeps really? chiming throughout the whole, you know, all the conversations. It's like the same same note, same chime, like same song sung, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So you have to have money to. But you know what's Well, weird? they feel like before they can make the offer, they got to know how yeah. to pay for it. Yeah. And that's just not true. Mm-hmm. So my intention today is to give you so many ideas that you will realize you are being held back with your own scarcity mindset, right? So definition of scarcity, this is just me winging it, okay? Definition of scarcity is not looking enough for solutions, mm-hmm. right? Thinking you know all the options and they don't work, that's yeah. scarcity. Yeah. And it makes you feel trapped, mm-hmm. It's because you haven't looked enough. You haven't tried enough. You haven't, per, you know, pierced the the uh, uh, parameters or peripheral vision. There mm-hmm. you go. Your mm-hmm. peripheral vision to see what's on the other side. You know, we were talking on a coaching call the other night, and uh, we were kind of in a kind of an intense conversation. I think this was last week on Monday night. I do the coaching calls, and um, it was the end of the night. It was a three hour night because mm-hmm. a three-hour coaching call, because uh, Labor Day, we didn't meet. Monday night was Labor Day, and we didn't meet. So it was a longer call than usual. Usually it's mm-hmm. two and a half hours, right? Mm-hmm. So it's the end of the night, and I said to one of my coaching clients, because they were like, because at the end of the night, I go around the table, and I say, well, what did you get out? What, what was most important to you tonight? What did you learn tonight? Because right? mm-hmm. I want to make sure they're paying attention, right? 
Oh, there's a quiz at the end. A pop quiz. Yeah. So what did you learn or what did you get out of it? So each person tells us, you know, the part that they enjoyed or what they got out of it. And it's actually pretty cool because it really helps me make sure I can help them. Yeah. Right. So I said to her, I won't tell you who her name is. I said to her, I said, you, do you know where success is? And she, she like stopped and there was silence. Well, what's a, that's a hell of a question. Do you know where success is? Yeah, it's okay. located at a very specific place. Do you okay. know where it is? Okay. I, I'll ask you the question. Do you know where success is? Uh, you know what comes to my mind? Around the corner. I know I have no idea where success is. So you get I it? I don't think it is as a where. It's a location. Okay. It's, it's it, an actual location where it, success is. Is it in your mind? And if, and if, you, and if you figure it out, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Once you know where it is, you can go get it. Well, just, just I, like, just like if I say to you, Peter, do you know where Home Depot is? Mm-hmm. And once you know where it is, you can go there, right? Sure. So, don't you want to go to where success is? Yeah, I've never heard it even asked that way. Right. So I asked her, "Do you know where success is?" And she said, "No." Mm-hmm. I said, "It's on the other side of fear." <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, if you want to know where success is, aim for fear and get through it. Yeah. Just aim for fear. Just point the gun and aim for fear mm. because it's on the other side of there. Yeah. So it's not hard. Now you know where the location of success is. What do you got to do? Mm. Aim for fear. Mm. Right. What's the name of the book? Uh, ready, fire, aim. No. Oh, yeah. Right. The, uh, kind of the backwards way of yeah. doing it. Ready, fire, aim. Right. That was a good book. All right. So let's un untrap your mind and get you to realize you have more ways to pay for a house than you can comfortably handle. Mm. Then hopefully, just hopefully, you'll get out there and get started because that's <laughs> what I want. Okay. So how, what's the time say? What are we? Oh, man. Is it 24 minutes? 21 minutes? Can you see it? No, I can't. See. I don't even know where it is from here. Sorry. Oh, On the top left hand side, the little red box that says live. Can no, you see? Oh, no. Emma's coming back. 21. 21 minutes. Okay, so I'm All six right. minutes over what I wanted to do because I want to do an in- a 15-minute intro. So here we go. You ready? Mm-hmm. So 20 ways to buy real estate without money down, and I call it the common ways to negotiate real estate deals without a down payment. This list will be on the how to buy real estate without a loan. No, 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 no. Oh, I said that wrong. This will be on the... Uh, flippinghousesforrookies.com forward slash, forward slash free stuff page later today. I'm going to have Emma upload it. Okay. Because okay. I'm going to steal that piece of paper when I leave today. Okay, here we go. Number one, and we're going to we're gonna go through them and we're going to talk about each one a little bit. Mm-hmm. Some of the ones in the beginning are a little common, but as I go down, there are 20 of them. Bill, I'm going to hear something new today. They're, they're, how, do you know, how do you know they're even new? How, what no, if I from told you. you I want to hear something I haven't heard before. What if I told you you already know what they are? You're just not thinking of them. Oh, well, that's good, too. <laughs> There's a few new There's, ones, Peter. Yeah. There's a few that I've not done, that actually done in the past and just I haven't talked about. More, more things that I'm not using everything because I can't get to everything. But, yeah, all you need is, look, you know what? All you need is one. Yeah. You know, we run around a lot thinking, how am I going to do all this? You just need one. One guy that says yes, one guy that signs a paper, and one check. Then get another one. It's one at a time. Number one, bank loan. Bank loan. We always talk about not getting a bank loan. Why can't you get a bank loan? Well, you can. Why do most people not go to get a bank loan? Well, I mean, there's a limit. You, you can get one, but I mean, how many houses can you buy in a bank loan with your own personal credit? There's a limit. Okay. But some people may not have credit. Right. There you go. So you just named two reasons why you can't get a bank loan. Yeah. One, you don't have credit. Yeah. And two, you have a limit. Yeah. Okay. So you could break that. You know how? Um, no, how? <laughs> See? See, there's something new, Peter. Get a partner or multiple partners. Oh. What says that you can't have one partner that you use their credit and you give them a, a fraction of the deal? Mm-hmm. And when I mean a fraction, I mean, you know, 10%, 15%, 20%, 50%. Mm. I mean, think of it this way. You say it all the time, right? Because you do it with me. Mm-hmm. You split deals with me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Right, and and what's your philosophy with that? Well, I'd rather have two deals with you than none by myself, right? Because we actually try to get two at once right. when we can. So I'm not putting you out of the way either. Like Bill sharing stuff with me that he doesn't need to bother with. So I try to get one, and you get one, and then right, we just get double the deals that way. So we're both doing well and support each other, right? Mm-hmm. And we help one another with all the deals, and and Particulars. we don't think about you know that's your job, that's my job. We just kind of like do it, 
Mm-hmm. I mean, like you were all excited the other day because we were. <laughs> you made like three comments about how we were like driving around in the car. Mm. Well, go ahead. You what, what did you say? Well, driving uh, around in the car, and we like. You had this list of things that we did. You were keeping track oh, yeah. of it. We, we yeah. got money. Well, and- we have a renovation going, right? It's and it's going like 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 a like a train. Like I, I <laughs> the last one was damn too damn slow, so we want to get one really right. This thing's going like a train. Like ten guys there. Meaning it's fast. Yeah, there's there was ten guys there the other day on the roof, on the garage, in the house. It was awesome. In the driveway, it was awesome. But we had that going on. And then uh, you found uh, some private money for the deposit on a three unit that we're buying. And you sent off a contract for another three unit that they didn't like how the contract was. You sent them another one. How's that? That should work. So there's two multifamilies being purchased and a house being renovated. There's money now, money monthly, money later. It was a good day, Bill. Right. And then just other things online and other things we're doing, putting meetings together, working with other uh, local investors in our state. You know, stuff that's just happening. Right. So that's the the point is, is that that we can do that because we're together. Trying to do it alone is not always easy. So you should get over the fact that you should get partners. Mm. The the problem with partners is the operating agreements between Mm -hmm. the two of you and knowing what you do before you do it. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, with real estate, it's pretty easy. It's like, you know, the basic the basic gist of it is, is if you give me, you know, if we put 10 percent down, in other words, uh, you're going to go get a bank loan, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you need some money down. You tell your your cousin Vinny, right, that I need 10% down. And he he's like, I have the 10% in the bank. It's like, okay, so you get 10% of the whole deal. You get 10% of the payments. You get 10% of the back end. You get 10% of everything. Mm. And you just keep it simple, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So you could go get bank loans. You could do a lot of them. Just get multiple people in the deal. So mm-hmm. go as long as you want with however many people that you can get. You could do that. Mm-hmm. I don't suggest it because it's uh, there's much easier ways to do it, but but some people want to do that. Hey, you know, to get started, you do anything. Right. Right. You know, just just I mean to learn just right. to get your feet on the ground and then refine as you go. So the way to so so realize every one of these deals that we're going to talk about, the way to get these deals or to get these these ways implemented is to have a deal and talk about the deal with them. Mm. Right. So just a quick story. We I was telling you the other day because I talked about it on a coaching call the other day because one of my I was actually talking to one of my coaching clients that is from Oregon. And uh, he promised me because he wasn't going to be on the call. He promised me to talk about it on a call because uh, he was like floored. And I was just I was just telling him a story. I wasn't thinking anything about it. Mm-hmm. And he was floored at what I did. Right. And to me, it's like, OK, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> so I had a guy that was that I screwed up. I have a deal where I screwed up. You know, I had a guy that was like trying to sell me a, a property that was burned and mm-hmm. he wasn't trying to sell it to me. He was trying to give it to me for a dollar and I didn't call him back for a week and he ended up selling it to somebody else for mm-hmm. 7500 yep. which good for him. Right. Yep. Anyways, because, because I am who I am, I asked, because he's telling me about all the money that he made on his property, right? I asked him point blank, what are you going to do with the money? And it turned into a private lending conversation. Uh, but the reason why I turned into this private lending conversation is because we have a three-family house or a three-unit house. It's not three-family. It's three units. They're side-by-sides. Yeah. I don't know what to call it. <clears throat> yeah. Three-unit Yeah, they're like a, du- a, a triplex instead of a duplex, right? Connected to another one. So yeah. it's like a sixplex, but they sell three on this right. side and three on that side. Like, hey, maybe we should find out who owns the other three. Yeah. <laughs> The only way you could tell the difference on the deeds, the deed structures are by the roof colors. That's how I figured that the out. The roof colors? Yeah, because the roof change. Oh, man, that's funny. So, how about the addresses? <laughs> well, that too. But yeah. you, you could but tell just, when you're looking at the six of them, you could tell yeah. three are one deed and three are the other because the roof, the that's roofs funny. are just different. Anyways. Okay. I didn't notice that. I yeah, was looking at that. So one. anyways, uh, the point that I'm trying to make here is, is that instead of taking the loss that I that I blew this deal and I lost it for a dollar, which mm-hmm. yeah, I'm pissed off about, mm-hmm. uh, we've turned the conversation into, I turned the conversation into we're buying this property. Here are the numbers. Here's the comps. Here's what it's worth. Here's the rents. Here's the profits. Here's what I'm looking for, mm-hmm. right? Which uh, I could still do the deal with the guy because I have, I have down payment money so we could do the deal with the guy and he would because he we were looking for 120 grand and he's willing to do 100 mm-hmm. more importantly I, I the way i lend money which is a bit different uh different than most because i feel like the opportunity is um more f- 
that's more opportunity for them than it is for me. Yeah, when you Most, borrow from somebody, you're making it like, oh, please, please, please. Now it's like, hey, I got this opportunity. You want it or not? No, I got other guys. That's okay. Mo- most people go begging for the money. In fact, l- let's just do this because the second one is private money, and that's what we're talking about right sure. now. So, so the second number one is two. private money, right? It rolls so, right so in. So when I'm, when I'm talking to a private money lender, it, you know, it's more like, you know, instead of me saying, oh, you know, can you, would you please give me this money because mm-hmm. I don't have money and you do, so I can't do this deal without you. Mm-hmm. I completely have a different philosophy. Like, I found this deal that nobody else has, and people don't know how to find deals like this. Mm-hmm. So, what, but what's you your should fir- invest. What's, is that your first sentence? Like, no, what, but what, that's the connotation. Yeah. And like with this guy, I mean, I had a conversation with him the other day. It was like, you got to understand I'm a little bit weird about money. You know, about people lending me money. He goes, what does that mean? I said, I've been doing it 15 years, and honestly, I have a handful of lenders. I don't have a lot of lenders. I don't go out looking for new lenders. So for me to take a new lender into my fold, it's like I'm very cautious about that because, you know, I, I just, I, I make them a lot of money, but, they're you know, they're, I keep it simple, and there's a few rules, you know, and the rules are you're going to get 9%, and, you know, we'll lay all that out in a contract, and I went over a few other things with them, mm-hmm. and it's like, so... You know, he's like, well, I have to admit, that's what I like about it is a 9% and it's very secure. Your mm-hmm. numbers are good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so that's it. So, private money is, uh, is absolutely the way that I don't use a lot of the other things because private money works the most. Uh, I will tell you that private money is right under your nose. Private money is, uh, you want to find private money? I'll tell you how to find private money. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm going to do something which I I didn't write down. Actually, I have a website that you could go to that matches your deal to private money lenders Hmm. or banks or hard money lenders. What you do is you put in, you put up, it literally takes a minute. You put the deal up and people bid on it. Oh. And I'm not going to give that over the airways because I don't know that URL off the top of my head. If you send me a support ticket, I will send you the link. Mm-hmm. It's it's a site you haven't even seen. I'm going to show it to you. This no, no, you've you've mentioned some things you've run into, and I've I've, I've always thought about it. But I always manage finding the money you do. I uh, so, but I wanted to look into that a couple of times. Yeah, so I have a link of a website, and all they do is connect investors with private lenders or hard money or banks. Yeah, huh, depending on how you want to do it. And you could, and it's money for uh, short money, like for 12 months for rentals, yeah. or buy and hold money. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a really cool website. Okay, so send and me you a support ticket. You just ticket. put the basic data, what the deal is, the basic financials. Yeah, they have a form you fill out, oh. and then within within like, good at within minutes, you have people that oh, will start awesome. giving you offers. Oh, it's it's like uh, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of it's kind of neat because it's kind of like what Uber did with taxis. You know, yeah. they, it's like you know you not you don't have the middleman called the bank. You mm-hmm. know, it's like it's like a perfect peer to peer type of lending, but very specific for, for real estate. Mm-hmm. And these guys are all healed. They go there and they have money and they know what their criteria is and they go look at deals and they invest in the ones they want. Yeah, it's a connection website, right? Well, the world is moving more in that direction all the time, yeah. isn't it? It's a really cool website. So if you send me a support ticket, you go to flippinghousesforrookies.com forward slash support or just go to flippinghousesforrookies.com period and go up, contact us. I'll send you that link. Anyways, more importantly, if you want to find, I'm going to tell you how to find private money. Mm-hmm. You, want, you want to know the secret? I don't know. This. What's the secret, Bill? There is a secret. That's a secret. Yeah. So what you do is you scan through your life and you look at somebody that actually has worked like at a place, you know, at a company for some time, like 10 years. Yeah. Right, like a big company like uh, like Bristol Myers or I don't know surgical insurance, insurance companies. Yeah, like big. Yeah, they have they have uh, uh, the kind of have benefits for the employees. Right, that kind. And right, those places usually set up IRAs or four hundred one ks for the employees, and they have been every week putting money into that IRA or into that four hundred one k. Yeah, and you go talk to them. Now you made a very clear point, and we're not going to spend all this time on every one of them, but this is the one that we have to spend the most amount of time on. You made a very good point. You, you made a point some months ago about how you should pitch to uh, Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant. Yeah. Because there's like business-minded people and then there's employees. Yeah. So some people are employee-minded and they're very nervous and very skeptical and they won't put their money up. No, they just had their job. They punched away for years and they, they socked their money away so someday they can live off of that. But they're not entrepreneurs. They're not self-employed. They don't know how that works and it scares them. Right. 
So they have safe, they think, so, safe jobs. So you could work. So like, you get fired one like day. Self-employed people would be better. Yeah, people with a, with a business, they have their own 401ks or their own IRAs. You know, they're self-employed. They, sh- they should get it. Good. So number one is bank loan with a partner. Number two is private money. A lot of it is going to be IRA money, retirement money, hmm. you know, savings, that kind of they stuff. They can't get at, at, at it anyways until they retire, so might as well get the most right. uh, return that they can. Correct. Number three is seller financing or owner financing. There's no better person to invest in this property than the person that already owns it and believes it and has faith that it's worth whatever dollar amount and they know all about the property. Mm-hmm. So ask them to finance it. A lot of times, a lot of times I'll get owner financing, like suppose I'm doing a, a, a subject to deal or a uh, getting the D deal mm-hmm. and they want to, they want, you know, that they owe, uh, what's well, a $200,000 house, they owe 120. They want 140. I can pay up to 160, mm-hmm. right? So there's a twenty thousand dollar difference between the 120 they owe and the 20. I give it to them in a note, mm-hmm. no interest, no payments, note. Yeah. So the twenty twenty thousand dollars, which is a down payment, I give to them in a note. Mm-hmm. If they want cash now, I subtract from the price of the house. So if they want five thousand dollars, I I double it. Yeah, you take ten off, and I take ten off. So I tell them I can't give you 140. I can only give you 130. Yeah, and you always have to negotiate. You have to make things so give they they get something, you get something. Just right. giving them five thousand doesn't give you anything. Right. You should get five thousand too, basically. But the point is, is that if you need that five thousand to give to them, you can now go. And I'm going to talk about this earlier. There's a you can go to uh, it's number nineteen, which is peer to peer investing. We're going to mm-hmm. come back to that. Okay, mm-hmm. so there's okay. other places to get that five thousand. Or if you want to get like this private lender guy that I was just telling you about with the with the multifamily house that burned, yeah. And I was talking to him, and he like he had you know he wanted to invest a hundred, and he's got more than that. Mm-hmm. What I said to him was, you know what? Let's get a cut. I do a lot of deals where I don't need that much money. I need you know ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars. Let's do a couple of those deals first and get used to one another mm-hmm. before we do a big deal. You know what he said? That's a great idea. Sure. You know, so here's a guy that I know he has at least 120 grand because he was looking at a deal. So if I if I got if I went and got th- like this 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 property we're we're talking about, mm-hmm. uh, I went and got twenty five thousand dollars for down payment. Mm-hmm. So that means this guy could do four houses, five or five, five, maybe six of those houses, yeah. four, five, six of those houses. So here I have a private lender because because he would be willing and we could do those deals, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So just just a valuable lesson, all right? Mm-hmm. So that's number three, owner financing. Number four, which is lease option, rent to own. I'm not going to talk about that. We've spent a bazillion podcasts on that. The what was three? So uh, one is bank loan, two is private right, lender, three was seller financing or owner oh, financing, okay. four is lease with options. Mm-hmm. So we've spent a lot of time talking about that. Mm-hmm. Five is option to purchase. Mm-hmm. We, we spent a lot of time with that. So- you know, you're not purchasing the property. That's the trick there. Option to buy or option to purchase, you're not purchasing it. You have the option. You have the option. You're going to go find your buyer. They're going to purchase it. You're going to get in the middle. So you're really getting paid for the paperwork, not the deal. And finding the buyer. <clears throat> One of the things that you have to like really figure out when you're doing this is when do I need to buy and hold? When do I need to just buy and sell? And when do I just flip the paperwork around for profit? Mm. Right? Yeah, never own it, just be in the middle. So the, every deal, you have to make those decisions. Mm. Do I want to buy and hold? Do I want to buy and sell quick for cash? Mm-hmm. Or do I want to just manipulate the paperwork and get fees? So buy base, and sell paperwork. Do you base that on uh, the, the the most optimization of money now, money monthly, money later? Yep. The best optimization of that much, scenario? And how much time you're going to put into it. Like a slot deal, you're buying and selling the option agreement. Yeah. So you buy it for 100 sell it for 10 grand, yeah. right? And you're controlling the property. Here's the thing is, is you can do that within 30 days mm-hmm. and get a check next month. Mm-hmm. And not have to worry about all the, you know, the closings and legal fees and money and none of that stuff, Mm -hmm. right? So I suggest, which which we suggest very often, just do those deals. And and you don't have to worry about having money down, Mm -hmm. okay? So number five was option to purchase. Number six is getting the deed. Uh, The loan stays in the seller's name. I will tell you that's how I started in this business. I did dozens of them. And just the experience of finding your seller and saying to them, would you be willing to sell the house for what you owe on it? And if they say yes, you have a deal, and you're done. 
Mm-hmm. That one sentence, mm-hmm. if you just called for sale by owners and asked that question, you know, like, when did you want to move by? Mm-hmm. And would you be willing to sell the house for what you owe on it? You ask those two questions and you did that enough times, somebody will say yes. And, and, and I'm telling you, if you make 15 or 20 phone calls a day, mm-hmm. somebody will say yes within a matter of weeks. Yep. And you'll buy a house. Yep. And you're not even buying the house. You're just taking over the payments. They throw mm-hmm. the house at you. They throw the keys in your lap and take over. Yep. Okay. Number seven, your buyer pays you. Your buyer pays the money, right? So so the trick is is to get the money, the down payment money from your buyer, mm-hmm. right? The trick is is to get the seller to wait. That's where the trick is. Mm-hmm. So you say to your seller, I can I, give me 90 days, which, by the way, the realtor wants. Six months. Right. So if you find somebody in 90 days, they're willing to pay top dollar for that property. Right. Yeah. Because that's how that's how financing works. Like we always talk about. If you're going to buy my computer for me today, I have a Mac Mm -hmm. and you were to pay me a thousand dollars for my computer today and give it to me in cash. You paid a thousand dollars for the computer. But if you swipe the credit card and paid for it over the next 24 months, you're paying more than a thousand dollars. That's how these people buy these houses. They know they don't have the cash right now. So they're willing to pay more because they know it's on payments Mm -hmm. and the person selling it has to have a benefit for wanting to wait for their money. Yeah. Right. Tra- treasure example may be more, more obvious, but it's just too obvious is houses. Right. It's like sometimes we have a cash buyer on a house. They actually have the cash. My uncle bought his house cash once. Worked his, here, here's the money and walked away. Right. Now, you know, if you just get the mortgage and it's 30 years, you do that math and tell me how much your house three costs. Three times. You, you buy a house yeah. for 100000 2.792, whatever the heck that is. Three, 300000 Very close too, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's that's the obvious one. So, I mean, it works in reverse. Right. If we're going to sell it over time or buy it over time, it's just, just more money involved. So, the trick is is to go find a seller that's willing to wait for that. They're willing mm-hmm. to take an elevated number and, and, and wait for that. So, a lot They're of waiting times, now. <laughs> They're a waiting lot of times you can, you can promise, and this is where most people miss it, and, and that's why I'm trying to do it like concise as I can. Mm. Uh, you know, somebody wants a $5,000 deposit and they're like, I don't have 5000 Well, if you go get a $10,000 deposit from your buyer, mm-hmm. you give them five, you keep five. You get the money from your buyer. Mm-hmm. All you need is, is 90 days to go find that buyer, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, how many times have I had coaching clients say to me, well, they're worried about if you don't pay, if they don't pay, what do you do? So if the mortgage is $1,500 a month, and and you say to the you say to the seller, so if I were to give you three months worth of mortgage payments in advance, so if they don't pay you, you would have a security deposit. Would you be okay with that? And ninety nine percent of the time, they'll say yes. So what do you do? You got a two hundred thousand dollar house, right? Yep. And you're gonna go get five percent down, which yeah. is ten grand, right? Sure. Even if you got eight grand, mm-hmm. right? You go advertise the house, no bank qualifying. Right. Yeah. You get your buyer to give you eight or ten thousand dollars for a security deposit. You give your seller forty five hundred, and you mm-hmm. keep the rest. Mm-hmm. You could do that within thirty days mm-hmm. if it's a pretty house. No work, no repairs, no permits, no loan, no anything. Mm-hmm. You're buying and selling the piece of paper. So in the beginning, the trick is is to not buy houses, control them. Mm-hmm. And get in between on the paperwork, which is what you and I do. That's what we've done 166 mm-hmm. podcasts on is creative financing, which, by the way, I want to rant for about two minutes about how mm-hmm. proud I am. And it's complete arrogance. It's complete pompousness. It's everything because I'm really proud of this. And I know you are, too. 166 podcasts. No commercials. Yeah, I send you back to my website, but that's because I get support tickets on how to do it. So mm-hmm. I just had to build a website no, because I'm trying to answer the questions. People asking from, from day one, like, how do you do this exactly? Right. And, you know, it, that, that's a big deal to do all that. 166 podcasts, no advertisements, no pitching other than go to the website and get our stuff. And I don't, quite honestly, there's weeks where I get nobody to go to the website and I don't even care. Because mm-hmm. we make our money flipping houses. It's, mm-hmm. The website is just, a, like you said, a place for us to go because people are asking for it, right? And we got some, by the way, we got some new stuff coming out mm-hmm. that is really amazing. Emma has been 100% over the ramparts on making some new products with some stuff that we're doing, and it's going to be amazing in the next, the next couple of weeks. Anyways, so 166 podcasts, 166 podcasts talking about creative writing and the stuff we're talking about, creative real estate investing. I'm talking about what... Kiyosaki talks about in the book Fake, 
Mm-hmm. Okay. He talks about infinite returns. You know what infinite return means? <laughs> yeah. No money in, all money out. No finite. Oh, yeah. All, we'll all money in. I'm sorry. No money in, in all, all money, money out. out. He right. doesn't say it. Those are my words. Yeah. All, no money in, all money out. So uh-huh. where can you go and, and, and buy a lease option agreement for $100 and get back $400 a month positive cash flow for five years plus back end money plus front end money? Yeah. Where are you going to go? No. no money in. Mm-hmm. It's infinite returns. Who mm-hmm. teaches that? You're mm-hmm. not getting that in school, man. Your mm-hmm. high school, mm-hmm. go down to your local high school and ask mm-hmm. them how to do that, mm-hmm. and they'll look at you like you got 15 heads and you just came from <laughs> Mars. Yeah. Okay? No can do. They can't mm-hmm. even balance a checkbook. Never mind. Build infinite, free, out of thin air money. No can do. Mm-mm. Okay? So if you think for one second and you want to change your life, learn how to create money out of thin air and infinite money. And this stuff that I'm talking about is exactly that. Mm-hmm. And and people don't get it. They, they want to worry about all the little mechanics and the little, I'm telling you, it's not as hard as you guys make it. It is simple. What you need to do is find a goddamn self- motivated seller and just say to them, would you be willing to sell the house for what you owe on it? Mm-hmm. When did you want to sell by or when did you want to move by? Mm-hmm. And start with that. Would you be willing to take monthly payments until I can get you paid off? Ask those three questions mm-hmm. to enough people. Mm-hmm. And I don't give a good goddamn if you're 10 years old, you'll buy real estate. Yeah. And you got to get over the thought that uh, houses are horribly valuable and people hoard them and they love them. Sometimes they hate them. Yes. It's a pain in the butt. They're not they assets. They're liabilities. I thought about this for a very long time because that's what you're saying. Yeah. You've been saying that for months. Yeah. The difference is, is the people you're talking about that love houses, they think they're assets. Yeah. What we're doing is we're looking for people that think they're liabilities. Yeah. They're a problem. They cost them money. They're hanging over them like a bad tornado. What are we going to do with this goddamn house? Or exactly. This pain in the... And if you make enough phone calls and you ask those three questions, I'm telling you, you will find these people. This is not yeah, hard Bill, to do. How are you going to sell it then? Oh, yeah. Nobody wants it. Put a sign out front called house for sale, no bank qualifying, and watch what happens. Yeah, and I, I was astounded the first time I did it. My phone wouldn't stop ringing, and it happens every time. Because people want houses, and they can't buy them. A lot of people want to rent, and they don't know they can rent to own. They're like, I can? Right. They're like all over it, like ants. Okay, so let's so run through it again. Don't worry about that part. One is bank loan. Two is using private money lenders. Three is owner seller financing. Four is selling. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Four is lease with an option. Five is option purchase. Six is subject to getting the deed. Seven, your buyer pays it, which we just went through. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to get past my normal seven deals. Oh, I see. Okay, so. So number eight is wraparound mortgage. Now, this is very important, and I'm going to spend about two minutes on this because I have to tell you that a subject to deal will blow up. Mm. If you say to your customer, I'm going to take the deed. Did we cover subject? Yeah, we cover subject to. If we're going to, we're going to take over the mortgage. Subject to means we're buying the, the property subject to the underlying mortgage agreements. Mm-hmm. All the terms and conditions are still in place. So subject to that, right. you're so taking So if over. you need to send a chicken on Tuesday, because that's the agreement, then send a chicken on Tuesday. To the bank. Because to the bank. Because that's, your that's the agreement. That's your payment. You're not changing that. And it doesn't eggs on Friday. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and you're not going to change it unless you recast the loan or refinance the loan. Uh-huh. Okay. So, so here's the point. If you say to your buyer, I'm sorry, to your seller, mm. I want to take over your mortgage and the deed goes in my name and the mortgage stays in your name and they say, I want to bring that to my lawyer and my accountant because I have to make sure that's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You're not going to get the deal. Mm -hmm. But if you do what I'm about to tell you, you will get the deal almost every time. Mm -hmm. And that's a wraparound mortgage. So here's what a wraparound mortgage is. It's actually a seller carry back mortgage that surrounds... Mm-hmm. The original mortgage. So is it's a it seller it, carry back mortgage? Now carry back means the seller owner financing. Yeah, he's carrying the loan. He so basically, it. what you're doing is is let's say you're selling me a house and you have a mortgage of a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Okay. Normally, owner financing is done when. Well, we can do it easily, most easily when the house is free and clear. There's no mortgage. Right. So you can name you your terms guy. and we can make a payment. You and the so how do you how do you do owner financing if you still own prop money on the property? You still owe, well, you still owe, well, you have, and you, it needs more than 100000 to buy the house? Yeah. 
Well, so, you have no, no, no. Just no? answer the question. Okay. So how do you sell? How do you do owner financing if you have a mortgage on the house? Well, you, you have to give him the note. Right. Or he has to give you the note. You have to pay the right. with a so, legal note that says you own it. So him. normally, owner financing is done with free and clear houses because it's just a matter of what the two of you decide how much you're going to pay now, mm-hmm. pay monthly, and pay later. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's all it is. Mm-hmm. What I'm telling you is a wraparound mortgage is owner financing or seller carry back mm-hmm. that surrounds the existing loan. So let me see if I get this straight. So the seller, you have a loan with him. And then he has he pays the mortgage with that. Right. Okay. So it he surrounds that mortgage. Right. It wraps around it. Yeah, I was asking before because sometimes you, he might need a little bit more than hundred thousand, right? So usually, if you just give him more than give him a dollar more than what he owes, mm. you can wrap it. Yeah. So you need you so need it, you need two to wrap two two like a dollar plus. Yeah, there's no rule with that, but okay. I th- obviously you don't. You're not gonna if you owe a hundred and I give you a mortgage for a hundred, it's not a wraparound. You're not wrapping it. You're not surrounding it with anything. Yeah, so, you so need- it's usually more money. Okay. So like in this particular case, if you owe a hundred thousand and I pay you a hundred and ten, mm. the ten thousand that I that I'm gonna that you're taking. So basically, that's your profit. Mm-hmm. And you're taking it in payments, mm-hmm. and you're going to surround that ten thousand dollar note. The seller's payment, the seller's yeah. profit, the seller's profit. Yeah. that's right. So the sellers. So normally, if 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 we're, if you owe a hundred hundred, and and you uh, sell for one ten, that means your ten thousands encompassed or surrounded by the uh, the hundred thousand, the hundred thousand, or. You know, sometimes wrap sounds funny, but if you just think of it, add it to it. Yep, add it to it. It's added. It, right. They, they they call it wrap, but it's added. But the mortgage is between you and I, mm-hmm. not between me and you, the uh, me and the bank. Mm-hmm. So I write a mortgage with you, saying I owe you one hundred and ten. Here are the payments. Here's all the language mm-hmm. of the the loan, all the note and everything of the loan, and then you're going to pay your mortgage yep. underneath that because it's yep. it's 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 part of. Okay. Cool. Wraparound mortgages are very understood because just the explanation of what we just went through, most people won't get that. I'll get support tickets on this, I promise you. But understand it, and it's an amazing way, amazing way to do business. But it works because that's normal language for the lawyers and accountants. Yeah. So you speak in their lingo, they don't think it's some weird-ass thing. Mm-hmm. Some cockamamie guy comes up with something to take money from you. Because, you know, what I see when you talk to accountants and lawyers and the experience I've had, they're thinking, would I do this? Right. If they don't like it, they tell the, the, the seller not to do this. <clears throat> right. Where they should just be asking, is it legal or not legal? It's my house. Let me make the decision. Right. So at least you, you, you couch it in those terms. They, they recognize, they go, it's okay. Well, here's what happens is is the way the attorney is thinking is is if, if you're going to surrender the deed, mm. you better have legal repercussions to get it back yeah. in case they don't pay. Yeah. And when we do a subject two where the mortgage stays in their name, they think the lawyer doesn't think it out mm-hmm. because technically it's safer to do a subject two than a wraparound mortgage. Mm-hmm. Okay? Technically. And here's yeah. the reason why. Because if, if you have a mortgage, right? And it's in your name, and the deed's in my name. Mm-hmm. If I default on the mortgage and don't pay, the bank's going to foreclose, meaning they're right. going to come sue me to get the deed back, okay? right? Because that's the only way they can get the deed back is they have to sue me for the deed to, to, to collateralize their collateral. Yeah. Okay? So before they do any of that, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to do a title search. And they're going to realize that your name is on the mortgage and my name is on the deed mm-hmm. and guess who guess who the defendants are going to be on the lawsuit both both of us yeah. guess who has more houses than you us. guess who's got deeper pockets than mm-hmm. the seller mm-hmm. so so it's actually safer to do subject to because of that reason because i can't walk away cuz it deeds in my name mhm yeah, so, they're thinking, oh, you you have the house, you can just leave. No, you you have the mortgage on the house that you owe. You know, the we owe it to the seller. So he's like the bank. You screw up, he he forecloses on you. Right. Right. Okay. So now now pay attention to this, and we're way off subject here. We're way off topic, but I think people like this. So so if we do a wraparound mortgage, and I pay you, and you don't pay the finance company, mm. that jeopardizes me. Number one. Because you could take the money and run, and I wouldn't know it. Yeah. So now I have my buyer in the house under contract with my buyer, and you go into into foreclosure. Mm-hmm. 
So here's what happens. Me, me, the, me the seller screws up because I don't pay the mortgage to the right. bank. Or pay the taxes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So a lot of times with my wraparound mortgages, I, I actually pay the bank directly. Mm-hmm. And that's how I get around it. Right. Okay. So, and then I pay you your, 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 that 10, the that, 10, that whatever the, whatever the number is. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we make those agreements in the wraparound mortgage. More importantly, here's what happens. If, if you go in the foreclosure, am I being notified? Who are they foreclosing on? Oh, yeah. The, the, the original owner, you don't even know how, you don't find out. Right. Ooh. How do you find out? Uh, sooner or later. <laughs> There'll yeah. be signs on the house or something like that, and there's oh, some man. right. The, the tenant calls up, so so you get it. So <laughs> this all I'm saying is is the lawyer is not too smart mm. because if he realizes this clarification, he would suggest they do a deed. You know, t- give me the deed and the loan stays in your name because because now the deed's in my name. I'm going to get notified. I'm responsible because the deed's in my name. I have more legal ramifications because the deed's in my name than the other way. Yeah, It's actually better for his client the first way, but they mm-hmm. don't think like that. Mm-hmm. You know, they have too many other loopholes. Okay, good. So that was number eight, wraparound mortgage. Okay. Number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine. Number nine. Why which, am I talking which, about number nine so much? Because this is the most unutilized, underused, oh. absolute, amazing device known to real estate. It's not because you play it backwards on the Beatles record and it says, turn me on, dead men? Turn no. me on? No. That's why, that's, sorry, that's what I thought of when you did that. Land contract, also known as an agreement for a deed, hmm. which is exactly what I was just telling you. So now I have a deal that we're doing in this three-family house. Right, I put together a purchase and sales contract. And the guy's willing to—he's selling me the house. He's selling me a three-family house. It's a two-family plus a one-family in the back. He's willing to give it to me for no deposit, and I make him uh, payments, which is four percent interest. Mm-hmm. Really sweet deal, mm-hmm. right? Sends it to the lawyer. He's all ready to go. Sends a purchase sales contract to the lawyer. What does the lawyer say? No, nope. no. You nope. should get a ten percent deposit, which is twenty grand down. Right mm. on a two hundred thousand dollar house. Yep. And the reason the lawyer said that is because he's afraid that once he writes the contract, or known as the note in the mortgage, mm-hmm. and he relinquishes the deed, he has to foreclose to get the deed back. And the and the lawyer is telling him that's ten grand to do that. At first, I'm like, it doesn't cost ten grand. But then when I started quizzing the guy up. I found out it's because the lawyer has, ex- he knows that I could string him out for six months with Connecticut law and between the missed mortgage payments and the amount it will cost for litigation, mm. it will be 10 grand. Mm-hmm. So he's advising his client to not to get 20% down. So he's got 10 grand in his pocket that he can put an escrow in case I sure. default. He's trying to protect him. Right. He's trying to protect him. Mm-hmm. So what do I do? I don't lo- roll over and play dead. That's not me. Well, you go. You, what you do is you go very specifically for the problem, and you turn it around as a way to I solve the solve, solve the concern. I mean, there's no, there's actually no problem. It's a concern of a problem. Right. Right. There's no yeah. problem. Nothing right. happened. Right. But you're fixing the concern. If you're worried about that, what did you do then? So I wrote a land contract. Mm-hmm. That's which what I did, is... which is an agreement for deed. Actually, in Connecticut, it's called a bond for deed. I don't know why. But it's the same language. It's got like four different names. Yeah, yeah. I wrote a line contract. No and wonder the, this business is confusing. Exactly. And what I wrote in the contract was that he doesn't give me the deed. Mm-hmm. He's in full control. And if I don't pay in 15 days. Like mortgage uh, mortgage payments. I don't make my uh, payment yeah, yeah. in 15 days. It's actually 30 days because you got the first 15 days is grace period and then another 15 days. So if I don't pay in 30 days, Mm. he just simply takes the property back and there's no foreclosure proceeding. I give him the keys. We're done. Yeah. It's like very cut and dry, but it's very specific, very cautious, very legal. It's Mm -hmm. not in legalese, but it's very Mm -hmm. legal to do. And the language, it was a five page contract. But and it goes over everything. It goes over, it goes over indemnification, which is for insurance reasons. It goes over eminent domain if there's a problem with the city taking over the property. Hmm. I mean, it like covers hmm. everything that could happen. This by far, and I'm here to tell you, and then I'm going to get off this because I promise you, I could do one entire show 
just on land contracts that we never, ever talk about. No, and just the basic idea is <clears throat> you get the deed after certain things happen, like pay it's it. A, or... It's an agreement for deed. What does that mean? Agreement for deed. Well, it's an agreement to get the deed. I'm not sure what the agreements are, but you can. So like... you make agreements yeah. on how you're going to give me the deed. Mm -hmm. One of them, which is most of the time, pay me off. Yeah, when, I'm, when you're paid. But while, while I'm using the property, here are the agreements, and the only way I can get the deed is to meet these agreements. Yep. So the owner is in more control, less worried. It's a very specific lease option that allows you to get principal reduction mm -hmm. instead of just leasing. It's what it is. Mm -hmm. But regardless of that, here's my final statement on land contracts. Mm -hmm. I have talked about the realtor. Okay, mm. who was who actually became a realtor in 1918? Okay, and what no, so happened? You said 1918, right? The realtor, right? What happened? 1949. Okay, let me finish. So the realtor became a realtor in 1918. Oh, they actually, they actually copyright or trademarked the word realtor in 1949. Mm-hmm. Okay, because between 1918 and 1949, they were actually charlatans, which a charlatan means somebody that pretends like they're doing something that they know nothing about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they were they were scammers, mm -hmm. and to stop them from being scammers, they they actually they actually uh, trademarked the word realtor, and then in 1950, September of 1950, they actually wrote a code of ethics. Because they were so outlandish and they were stealing deposits and doing all kinds of shady deals, mm. okay? And people were, were getting ripped off. They actually s created the uh, National Real Real Estate uh, National Association of Realtors yeah. in 1950 with the word realtor being trademarked and a code of ethics so that they can start putting these guys under wraps and getting them under, under national law mm. so that they wouldn't rip people off, hmm. okay? I'm here to tell you prior to that, 1,000% of the time, people use land contracts to do to do deals. Land contracts have been around for hundreds, if not thousands of years, hmm. definitely hundreds of years. Hmm. And that's how people bought and sold property was with the land contracts. It is the oldest device that I can think of on how to buy and sell a piece of property. You know, that's strange because, you know, you think of what we talk about, mostly you, and it's like uh, weird things, new things, new angles, new new, and they're not. Right. And the actual terms are recognizable right. by legal people. They go, okay, we can do that because it's the real terms. Because it's it's been the real for contracts. Of years. Yeah, it's been around for hundreds of years. Yeah, but it's, it's just not, utilizing it's not a fad. Yeah, you know, All right, so now, things are sometimes not what they seem to be. The real fad, right, is realtors. Exactly. So the problem is, is that realtors, what they brought to the table. Is is the is the mafia, the real estate mafia, and go listen to episode number ninety, mm -hmm. uh, battling the real estate mafia, or mm -hmm. ninety one, something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's because what happens is, is they got the banker involved, and the banker realized, which is a whole thing that, and and I'm and I've never really elaborated on why that's so important. This exact point in time, and it's because really what happens is, is if you listen to the uh, creature from Jekyll Island. Uh, which is episode number, uh, when did we do that? Oh, my God. oh episode number 162. Mm. We actually played mm -hmm. uh, an, a live seminar from the guy that wrote that book mm. back in the, in the 80s. And he actually explains how debt is how the banks create money. And it's done through real estate. So real estate is an integral part of the monetary system, money, because money used to be backed by gold mm -hmm. until 1971. Nixon took it off of the, the gold standard. He it did. It is now backed by real estate. So real estate is an integral part of our monetary system. Your dollar bill note is backed by real estate. Yeah, it doesn't say that on the bill. And if you ask somebody, they would say it's not. It's, it's backed by whatever. But it really, fundamentally, that's what that's behind it. So when I talk about the realtor being on, they're all in bed together. If it wasn't for the realtor having this national association and doing what we're talking about, they would not get away with the monetary system, the fiat money that we have now, because mm -hmm. it's all tied together. So it's mm -hmm. the biggest crooks in America are 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 fondling our wallets every day and you're not going to break that 
you know, my son worked for the bank and he quit because every day they'd hammer, see how many loans they could get, how many yeah. mortgages they could get. He was a teller. Yeah. You know, but they still want them to like, because so they can collect debt, collect right. debt, collect debt right. to make. That's you know. how they make their money is the debt. And I don't mind somebody doing some of that, but when it gets exorbitant and there's just piles of money sitting around and we don't have it and someone else does, right. you want to get the pitchfork out, right? Okay, good. So that was number nine. We're way behind. So number 10 is equity share with an investor. So we've talked about that a little bit with the bank loans. Mm -hmm. But in this particular case, what you could do is you have somebody that does have cash. You just make a deal with them. Often it's done in our in our arena like 50 50. Mm -hmm. Like that's how I did my first six years. Uh, my first six years with my partner is we had an equity share partner agreement. Mm -hmm. So he put up the money, he handled the payments, he made the mortgage payments, he did the banking aspect of it. I did everything else, yep. and we split 50 50. And like you said, you do that with me. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's better off to have some than none. Right. Yeah, but there's also strength in a team. Yeah. You know, I mean, any organization doesn't have one guy at the in, out, uh, in the front. It's just like a bunch of people, right. and they have their jobs, and you can. It's more powerful. Exactly. Number eleven is the seller takes out a HELOC loan, which is a home equity line of credit. It's H E L O C HELOC. Mm -hmm. Okay. What the HELOC is that, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so HELOC, it's home equity line of credit. So here's what happens, just what we were talking about. Uh, again, we're not going to elaborate on this, but it's actually what you just said a minute ago is more powerful than I think even you realize. The banks complete an utter objection there in their board of uh, what are the board, board of directors, directors? Yeah. meetings? Here's what they talk about. Yeah. How can we get all of the equity on loans? That's what they want. I'll get the so the equity that people have because yeah. you know first you go to to borrow the money, and then you pay the house off, and then they go, she our money stopped. How can we get some back? Right. How can we get them keep them going? Like a drug dealer. So that's right. So because <laughs> oh, no. because because they uh, because they're so satisfied with loans and it's so integral. It's because the money is backed by real estate now, not gold. Yeah. It's with T bills and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Because the money's backed with loans. Because the way they make money is with debt. Because what you don't realize is is that every time they get debt, it allows them to get nine more loans. And go listen to episode number 162, The Creature from Jekyll Island. You'll talk about that. So the bank's mantra internally is loan money on real estate. And HELOC loans are like, so the difference between a mortgage and a HELOC loan is this. Mm -hmm. A mortgage is the deed's not in your name and you don't own the house yet. So we're going to lend you the money to buy the house. Mm-hmm. A HELOC loan is the the deeds in your name already and will lend you money on the house. Mm -hmm. So a HELOC loan is a home equity line of credit. So if the person has $50,000 worth of equity, they can go get a loan on it from the bank and turn it into cash. Sure. If they're willing to do that, you make the payments. Mm -hmm. So if you have a free and clear person that has a $200,000 house, right, and you could you could literally use uh, the subject to math, which means you can pay up to eighty percent of the loan to value ratio. That means that person could go get a loan with a HELOC loan of one hundred and sixty thousand dollars on a free and clear house. Mm -hmm. Write a check to himself for one hundred sixty thousand. Close the HELOC loan so they can't take any more money. Right. 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 And you make the payments on one hundred sixty grand. So on a free and clear house, you just funded. That house with, with $160,000 with, with purpose. It. With the house. With the house. <laughs> the house funded itself. Because you used the HELOC loan. Yeah. Okay. And people do this. Okay. Because it's, it's, it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if it solves a, 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 an issue for them, it does. Right. Number 12. And this is, this is because my partner has done this. And I, and I tried to do this once and it didn't work. So I can't say that I'm an expert on this, mm. but it does work because I know lots of people have done it. Okay. You ready? Yeah. So the name of this is, is how to buy real estate without money down. So if you need money down, what would you do? Right? Sell dirt, timber, plants, anything, anything that the house has like objects. For example, huh. the way I learned this is, is I had a friend of mine 
that was buying and selling through options multi-million dollar houses. So he'd buy $2 million house for $1.5 million because they were paying a $27,000 a month mortgage payment, you know, like football players and, you know, famous yeah. people like that. Here's the thing. Those houses are 10,000 square feet, you know, 8,000 square feet. Mm-hmm. They're fully furnished. You buy the house and get permission from the owner to sell the furniture in the house and you raise the money <laughs> to do what you got to do <laughs> from the auction you have on selling the furniture that's worth thirty, forty, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> There's some deposit money. Because here's the thing. That's right. Here's the thing. <laughs> that house is a ten thousand square foot house. It's a big house. That's a lot of furniture. Wherever they're living now already has furniture in it. So it's a problem for mm-hmm. them to get the furniture out of the house to sell the house. Mm-hmm. So if they just give you permission to sell the furniture, even if you don't do the deal, you've done them a favor because you emptied out the house and they didn't have to go spend a lot of money to have people move the stuff, have movers go in and wrap it and take it out and then put it in storage and be stuck with all that because they don't want that. So you've helped them by selling the and they don't want to do it because they, oh, they, they, people like that don't want to fuss with stuff. It's, it's, right. That's what we get paid to do, things like that they don't want to do. My partner bought a dealership. Actually, he had a, when I first met him, he had a car dealership, and, and he, he sold that car dealership, and he was arguing with his partner and his daughter, who was also a partner, about a piece of property he wanted to buy across town, right? And they kept saying, it's not big enough for a dealership. So he argued with them. I'll never forget. It was six months' worth of arguments. Here's what he did. He bought the property and sold the mountain, which was rocks that somebody wanted. He sold the mountain to some guy, and the guy came in, and the guy was a stone guy. He took, he crushed up and took the mountain, which was all stone, yeah. out of the, and he went and sold it to somebody mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. So this guy came in and <laughs> took the mountain out and sold the stone to individuals. He was like a, you know. Crushed rock guy. You know, yeah, for, whatever, you know, big walls or whatever, whatever yeah. he was. But he sold to those kind of people. You need to buy stone. So Comes my from partner, my partner sold the mountain to this guy. This guy came in and took the mountain out. So now that where there was like a quarter or a half an acre, it was now 1.5 acres that was flat because the guy took the mountain out and he sold it to this guy. Man, he made money on the problem. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. I love that. When you just go, you know, you walk out of your house, you walk out of your cave, you got nothing, but you see bananas and you go pick them and sell them. Right. You find stone, you go sell it. You find, you know, you do something. Right. Number 15. How am I doing? Uh, some new ideas? No, it's just, oh, yeah, those, those are, I, I like number, those. Uh, this is number 13. That I'm feels sorry. like money out of thin air. <laughs> yeah. Number 13. Sells the stone. <laughs> number 13. 13. Substitution of collateral. Mm-hmm. Substitution of collateral. So what happens is uh, I have a deal with you. You got a free and clear house. I write a note for you for 150000 I'm making monthly payments. My buyer decides in 18 months from now that they have the money and they want to buy the house. Mm-hmm. I have a five-year agreement with you. Mm-hmm. I usually call you up and say, will you take less money if I pay you early, mm-hmm. like one hundred twenty grand?" And you'll say no mm-hmm. or you'll say yes or whatever. It depends on... Uh, your situation, because a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush, sure. right? So what will happen is you'll say, no, I don't want the $150,000. you are like, well, I have three more years to go with it. Would you be willing to do a substitution of collateral? So in other words, right now, the 150000 is collateralized by 123 one, Main Street House. Mm-hmm. What I would do is I would sell the house to my buyer, we would have a closing. I now have that $150,000 in the bank, right? Sure. So if I take the collateral, which is 123 Main Street, and go buy another house at ABC Front Street, I could take the 150000 and move it over to ABC Front Street mm-hmm. and buy the house. So at the closing, I automatically built in a private money lender because I took the money from 123 Street Main Street and put it at, a, at, at ABC Front Street. And it's substitution of collateral. So I took the collateral from one house, put it on another, and I automatically built in my private lender. Mm. And when you start doing deals, this is a huge thing. Yeah. Okay. If you want to get anything, any kind of topic on this, or if you want to learn about this, I'm going to bring up something that's uh, probably not something I want to talk about because it's a whole conversation that can last for an hour. 
but it's called 1031 Exchange. Mm. The 1031, it's it's along those bases. Mm. 1031 is a form number for the IRS. Right. So what it means is is that you can actually take a tax relief when you when you sell a house and you have profit mm-hmm. and you can put it onto another house. It's that concept. So instead of paying the taxes, you, you reinvest it. it. You can put it in another house and defer it. Right. So you don't have the money yet, so you don't have to pay the taxes. Right. That's what I was thinking when you said that. It reminded me of that. Yeah, that's but why I'm bringing it up. Yeah. So, but the, you're just helping the investor reinvest his own money. Right. Okay. And keep it, and keep getting interest for it, or keep getting profits. That's or usually what they want. Right. And if you if you solve that, like, oh, you can reinvest my money. Thank you. He, he wanted to go for five years, so right. go for five years. Okay. Number fourteen. You ready? Yes. Issue stock from an LLC partner. So what you do is you buy stock because a lot of times if you if you do syndication and you put more than one investor into a pool of money that's called a REIT, which is a real estate investment trust. Mm-hmm. If you do it correctly, and you need to do this correctly, you can form an LLC and there's actually shares in the LLC. So if I put in a thousand dollars and you put in a hundred thousand dollars, then you'll own a majority of the shares of the LLC. Mm-hmm. You then take that LLC mm-hmm. and you go buy property with it. Okay. They can do this in advance. Yep. Oh, okay. So this is a way you could have money before you have a deal. It just right. they'd have to have confidence in you. Yeah, I'm going to come it. back to this in a minute. Okay. okay. That's the kind of different than what yep. you. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, like it that. happens a lot. Uh, the idea came because it happens a lot in apartments. That's how they do it with apartments. Sure. And syndicate means people all chip in. Syndicate syndicate means you uh, go find people and put them in a group. Yeah. Yeah. And they all. Mutually invest in bigger right. deals. Okay. Right. So it's a mutually bonded group. Mm-hmm. Right. So number 15 is hard money. I don't need to talk about that. Notice it's number 15 because I freaking hate <laughs> it. Bond, yeah. yeah, freaking hate it. You know, I got the guy that we're buying the three bed, the three apartments from, he says mm-hmm. he lends hard money at 15% and yeah. four points. I'm like, oh, yeah, wow. no can do. And the interesting okay. thing is, uh-huh. he does that. And what are we buying from him? Uh, it's repos. Working. Yeah. <laughs> so he hasn't he hasn't connected the dots. If he wasn't so hard ass with his fifteen percent and four points, he wouldn't have repos. Mm-hmm. And we're buying the repos at pennies on a dollar. Or so yeah, and uh, way better financing yeah. at six percent. Yeah. Okay. Good. Number sixteen, uh, family loans. Mm-hmm. Now this kind of goes back to the private money, but you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna realize that there's more people around you that have savings accounts. Mm-hmm. IRAs, retirement money, and home equity money. Yeah. Or credit cards. Mm-hmm. Here's an amazing thing, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute too. Uh, credit cards right now have a lot of uh, offers where you can get 0% for like 18 months. Mm-hmm. You could do a lot of real estate with 0% money in 18 months. Okay. Uh, so number 17 is pledge future income as a down payment. So, like, you could have a tax return, uh, or you know that uh, that you're gonna you're gonna sell something, get a lawsuit coming, mm-hmm. uh, or you know you're gonna you could actually do that with your buyer. You know, you tell them, okay, I'll let you get in for five thousand dollars down, but I need twenty grand the first twelve months. Mm-hmm. You know, and you work on that, and they and they'll get qualified. You know, they might have they might have a lawsuit, they might be able to sell another house. Mm-hmm. You know, so. There's a, so many different facets that this can happen, but you pledge future income as a down payment. Okay. But it has to be something solidified because most people won't just take a promise to appear. They'll want to have evidence and proof that it can solidify, that it can mm-hmm. actually happen. Like having a lawsuit would be one of them. Right. Uh, or having another house they're selling would be another one. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of like uh, along the lines of a Hubbard clause, uh, which is where you buy a house w- with the promise to... Uh, get the mortgage intact once you sell your house. Sure. Uh, realtors do that all the time, but this is a little this is a little bit more uh, broad. Mm-hmm. Okay. Number eighteen is a line of credit, like I just spoke about, which is zero percent credit cards. If you got a six fifty credit score or thereabouts, or somebody does, mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be you because you can go back to up where I was talking about number one, where you can actually get partners with a bank. This is a credit cards are a bank in case you don't know that. Mm. Uh, you could go get somebody that has decent credit and willing to open up a credit card and you can make them a part of the deal. So if your mother is like really believing in that you could do this and she's got a really good credit score and she could get a $50,000 credit line mm-hmm. or a credit card, 
you should partner up with her. Give her 10% or 50% or whatever the number is mm-hmm. and use her credit card to go put a down payment on a property. And especially if you're buying multifamily houses, which we don't talk about a lot, uh, we, we I think we're going to actually get together with someone and start doing another podcast just on apartments because mm-hmm. uh, this person is really sharp. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're working on that now. Uh, but if you're going to start buying apartments, what better way than, uh, you know, like a 60-year-old person or, you know, 55 or 60-year-old person that has a child that's in their 20s, like my daughters are 28 and mm-hmm. 25, right? Mm-hmm. And, and if I had a ability and I, you know, I worked all my life and I could get a $50,000 credit line and we can go buy a three-family house and put 20 grand down or 25 grand down. And now all of a sudden what happens is, is we have $30,000 in the back end. Mm-hmm. And we can make a thousand dollars a month or eight hundred dollars a month off of rents because you can do that because we the three family we're buying it's yep. got a thousand dollars a month positive cash flow, mm-hmm. right? Why wouldn't they want to do that? So if you split that with them, so they're putting up their credit card every month. You're paying from the payments you're paying on the credit card, so you're making the payments, yep. right? You're reducing the debt, mm-hmm. right? And you give them a three or four or five hundred dollar check that helps them for their retirement or the for their income. Why wouldn't they want to do that? They're sure. leveraging the credit card money to get income for themselves to be able to relieve, get ready for retirement or help them with their retirement uh, liabilities. Sure. I had that conversation with one of my sons when I was telling about how we're working multifamilies and the girlfriend goes, oh, why would you want to be like a landlord and stuff? That's the conventional because her father's conservative. Right. My kid goes... See, haven't seen us work and see my checks coming. Go like, no, I'll be glad to have some some apartments down the road there. Right. So uh, the only trouble, just to be honest, what he's having is right now stock market is doing good. So yeah. some of these some of these loans are making more percentage. I don't think that's going to last long. So you know, would you rather have your money secured by stock market at a certain point or real estate at some point? So just to make a point on that, and, and because we're way over time here, we're going to end in a couple minutes. But just to make a point with that is just think about this. Mm. Uh, economies, you know, I talked about the ten, the the ten year swing, which obviously President Donald Trump has changed that. Okay, he's yep. broken the eighty year pattern. Mm-hmm. Okay, but more importantly, uh, what happens is is when the economies change, the money, the stock market goes down, mm-hmm. and people put it in real estate, and then and then real estate will go down, they put it in the stock market. So. Money guys are looking for the most amount of return. Mm-hmm. Right now, the stock market is doing well. So, yes, it's harder to compete with the stock market, but that soon will return. I mean, that soon will turn. It doesn't It'll go change. forever. Yeah. I mean, they can't go to $60 million a month, you know, or whatever for for, mm-hmm. for, for dividends. Mm-hmm. So, sooner or later, that will turn, and then the money will come back into, into real estate. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so it's a little bit of both. You are right. Some people just don't like me. Like me. I, I wouldn't buy a stock if it was a dollar. You know, I just, I don't know enough about it. I probably should. I will at some point have to do that. But uh, uh, just because I just read the book, if you listen to Kiyosaki, he says the three things he invests in mm. is uh, gold, silver, and real estate. Mm-hmm. That's it. He doesn't do any stock. No. Mm. Okay, good. And he explains in the book why. Mm-hmm. All right, so number 19, peer-to-peer lending. So this is lending without a bank. This is what I was talking about earlier. I can't remember the name of the website, but if you send me uh, a support ticket, I will send you the link of this peer-to-peer group that actually specializes in investors Mm -hmm. where you can buy, you can get money for uh, flips, Mm -hmm. you get money for buy and holds, and you can get money for anything doing with real estate, you know, Mm -hmm. anything to do with real estate. Mm -hmm. Uh, So if you send me a support ticket, I will send you that link. Uh, that's uh, flippinghousesforrookies.com forward slash uh, support or go to the top of the page and just send a contact me and I'll send you that link. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, just because I don't know it and I don't want to go look for it. Uh, and then the last one, which is number 20, make the seller your partner. And we forget about that too often. So I'll give you a, 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 a how you could do that, a partial partner mm-hmm. or a full partner. So suppose you and I are are negotiating, and this has happened to me, especially right now when the economy is good. Uh, it's not always this way, but when it's good. So you have a house that's worth two hundred thousand, uh, and I'm the, I'm trying to buy it from you for we'll say one seventy. Okay. Okay. And you're like uh, willing to do uh, payments. You're willing to do a, t- a time, you know, a monthly payment to yeah, I could pay you. I'll off. give you payments. Okay. I'm the seller. However. You're negotiating with me with price because you're thinking, well, in two years from now, the property could be worth 230 instead of 200 Could be. 
right? Or and you want that upswing. So if you're going to stay in the deal, you want to have that benefit as well. Right. So here's what I've done in the past. So I will tell my buyer, I'm sorry, my seller. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know why I do that. I tell my seller, here's what we'll do. Right now, the comparables are 200000 Yep. That's what the comparables are. I will write language in our agreement that if I sell anything over two hundred thousand, I will share that with you. Mm-hmm. So if I sell for two thirty, then we split it whatever percentage sure. thirty seventy fifty fifty whatever you agree twenty fifty twenty eighty whatever you want to do. But mm-hmm. you make an agreement, and this way here they will uh, actually be enticed to be a partner. So it's a partial partner, so they mm-hmm. can get the upswing of the property. So now. They sell the property now. They get whatever they get now. They get monthly payments along the line. And they so it's money now, money monthly, money later. Right. So you're giving them money now, which you'll probably get from your buyer. Yeah, a little bit of the deposit. Right. And then you'll do money monthly, which is their payments. Mm-hmm. And then they'll get money later. So what you're doing is is offering them a portion of your deal. You're becoming partners in the deal because, quite frankly, if you don't, they'll say no and you have nothing anyways. Yep. So why not share it? The more conventional way to do it is is to actually have a partner, which which we you and I have done many times. Like for example, uh, you can uh, we did the the one that comes to my mind is uh, uh, the one in Newington. I forgot her name. I know her last name. I don't want to say that. Mm. Margaret? Uh, Margaret, yeah. Margaret deal. So yeah. we made her a partner. The Margaret deal. Yeah, the Margaret deal. So we made her a partner. That's just the one that comes to my mind. Sure. So what happened was is we gave her three offers, uh, one of which was a really low cash offer. Like, for example, and these are not the numbers, but let's like, say we gave her, uh, the house was worth 200000 We gave her one offer, like 100000 cash. Mm-hmm. And then we gave her another one where it was like 140000 if you let us make payments over the course of five years. Mm-hmm. Right, and then the middle offer was, how about if we give you like one twenty five, and you hold the mortgage for a year, and if we sell it in a month from now, you get one twenty five. If we sell it in twelve months, you get one twenty five. Yep, right? yep, yep. We'll come in, spend the forty thousand dollars on the renovations to fix the house up, right, and we'll sell the house. Mm-hmm. Right. So where do you get that forty grand from? That's the first question I'm going to get on support tickets. On the on renovation. Yeah, for um, the renovation. So that's yeah. where you go get private lenders. That's where you do peer-to-peer. That's where you use the credit card. Any one of those, there's a multiple way of doing mm-hmm. somebody's credit line. You you get a second partner right, to give you that money. In mm-hmm. the beginning, you'll have to give away money, but you'll start doing deals until you get them under your belt, and then you'll stop doing this after four or five deals. Yeah, you get better terms. Right. Basically. But you know, if you tell me you got a $200,000 house, you paid one twenty five, and it needs forty. dollars there's, right. there's plenty of equity. It's, it's safe. And they'll lend. Yeah. Right? So, so with Margaret in this particular case, we made her a partner. We didn't have to give her the $125,000. We had 12 months to do it. Mm-hmm. So we wrote a note. Mm-hmm. We made no payments, no interest, nothing until because we paid twenty five thousand dollars more for the property. We were paying a hundred cash. We mm-hmm. gave her one hundred twenty, uh, whatever the numbers were, but we gave her yeah, more it was, money. Yeah, it's close. I think one twenty six, maybe it was close. Yeah. So it just so happens that house in four months, we we bought it, we f- fixed it, and we flipped it in four months because we did a really good job. And I think this Meriden house is going to be the same way. We we mm-hmm. we did such a good job doing the renovation. You did mm-hmm. that. We actually sold the house quick. So she got more money, but we made her the partner. Mm -hmm. We made her a partner on the deal because we didn't need to. We had no money in the house, which, by the way, another thing you could do, which you do very well at, where you could do like go get credit cards from Home Depot, Mm -hmm. Lowe's, Mm -hmm. and, you know, all those department stores, you know, that that buy stuff, go get credit cards for those. Like like we, you have a credit card, like 5,000 or 10,000 or something with Home Depot, Yeah, you know, and we just went and bought appliances. It's it's plenty for one renovation. Buy the appliance, buy some this and that. You know, the contractors buy the nails and the screws and whatever, the wood, but just the, you know, the appliance. So the object is, is to not, not, not not borrow money it's it's to borrow it because once you close everything gets paid off yeah we like avoiding interest yeah so those zero percents for six months at home depot lows are just it's free money basically right. you make little payments and like $82. we just went and bought appliances and you said to her there's a special so we not only got a 40 percent discount mm-hmm. on the on the appliances we also got them to give a zero percent or they call it deferred interest mm-hmm 
for uh, 18 months or something like that. So yeah, so we got you spent we got, a little more. They gave you like yeah, it was long. So we got thirty something through three thousand or thirty three hundred dollars worth of appliances. I forgot what it was for like twenty two hundred bucks, and and we put it in a credit card. We don't have to make any payments. We have to make payments. Oh, yeah, it's small. It's $82, whatever. $80 payment whatever. for a couple of months until we can until we get the house done. So in, in three months from now, we'll just pay it all off when we sell the house. Mm-hmm. Right? So Save interest that way. Yeah. So all those little things are very important. <clears throat> the peer-to-peer lending, if you just type in peer-to-peer lending, there is a there, there are pages and pages of that stuff. You can go in there. Uh, and this new website that I'm talking about uh, will help a lot, too. Mm. Okay? Wow. Hour and a half? Oh my it God, seemed it seemed like just seconds though. It was yeah. also good. So, I'm sorry the podcast was so long, but uh, sorry we gave you 20 ways to buy property without yeah, money. Yeah, sorry, exactly. So, um, <laughs> complain all the way to the bank in six months. I've been really working hard with these <laughs> podcasts. I, I've taken the time constraint off of them, as you know. But we give. A he typed lot. this one. Come on, folks. Yeah. He typed this one. I've been given a lot of information. So, in return, if you feel like we are giving a lot of information and we are definitely helping you, which I know we are because we get comments all the time, please go and give us a review. I need reviews. I want to. I think we're number five. If you type in iTunes real estate investing, we're number five. I want to stay ahead of Grant Cardone. Sorry, it's a game. Sorry, Grant. Uh, but I want to stay ahead of him. I want, and, we want to stay ahead of him until he calls us on the phone and says, who are you guys? Exactly. Right? Well, he, yeah. Anyways, so the point is, is this. Uh, I need reviews. Please go give this to us. We need reviews, not just I. We need reviews. So if you go to flippinghousesforrookies.com forward slash podcast, or just go to flippinghousesforrookies.com and go to the top, it says podcast there. Uh, on the podcast page, there's actually a link where you can go to iTunes and give a review or a- any other platform you're listening to, Stitcher or any Google Play, whatever, all those other ones. Uh, there's a whole bunch that I don't even know about. Uh, just go give go give uh, us a review. And uh, I'm going to offer it to you again. If you give us a review and I can go find it, send me a support ticket and I'll send you a gift. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm not bribing you to go do it, but I'm telling you if you take your time, I'm willing to give you a little compensation for it's that. It's rewarding. Yes. So uh, please, 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 please go give us a review. Uh, good or bad, we re- I, re- re- I read them and share them with Peter. Uh, we make adjustments, all that kind of stuff. Last thing I want to say before we get out of here is if there's a topic or something you want to talk about or you want us to cover, something you're having trouble with, something you feel like you need help with, uh, please send a support ticket and we will definitely consider it as one of our podcasts. With that said, we're over and out. Thanks for tuning in to the hottest real estate topics on the planet with Bill and Pete. If you want to continue learning how to buy and sell real estate without money or credit, head over to FlippingHouses.club for some cutting-edge real estate wealth tools. Or contact us at info at FlippingHouses.club.